I'm more I'm working on it right now. Groovy. Thanks. It, I was going to copy the template out of, I think we have a template somewhere. I'm trying to find the template. <laughs> if you just want to throw a doc together, I can help you to cram the, sure. the code of conduct and just the standard stuff on it. Sure. Here, let me get it. I need a name before sharing. <laughs> so what do you want me to name, name this? Just like SIG cert stream one? Yeah. It'd be awesome. Okay, copy link. I'll pop it in the chat now. My blank document. <laughs> it's a canvas with which we will paint security onto. Yep. I've linked the note stock in the main cert meeting notes. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Yeah. I think we've got quorum, Randall, if you want to take it away. Yay. Um, why, hold on. Let me, let me give everyone edit access because I thought I did that. Huzzah. Editor, there you go. Now it's done. So uh, we have notes that are coming together. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm reading off of the GitHub that was linked. So if you just want to go through those speak about or talk about them and then go from there sure I, I think our desire is to take a look at what the larger sig agreed to as part of tasks for this stream and we want to start filling out some details uh, so we can so should i copy key steps and milestones and maybe start talking about those because i think those start first yeah. that'd be cool yeah so I'll copy those in our Word doc or in our Google Docs. Thanks. Perfect. So I'm already talking to homebrew on the first one. But yeah. Um, I think everyone knows each other, right? We don't have to do introductions. If anyone wants to introduce themselves, they're more than welcome to at this time. I'm Randall. I'm from Gen 2. Most of you know me. Um, yeah. I'm Crobe. But, uh, I uh, do stuff. And I'm here to support Randall. So anyone else want to introduce themselves? Be good. Um, I'm Emily Fox. I'm here to assist where I can. Hi, Emily. Thank you for being here. Hi, I'm Jennifer with Tide Lift, and I'm also here to assist where I can and to learn. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. Hey, I'm Brian. I'm here, obviously, to help where I can. Also really interested in making sure that as a part of the mobilization plan that we um, this is one of the uh, canaries in the coal mine, so to speak, of how we figure out how to get this project funded and, and overseen and blow the doors off of uh, all of our goals. Pleasure to have you, Brian. Hey, I'm, I'm Rahul. I'm just, this is my first time in one of these meetings. So I'm just here to spectate and listen mostly. Very cool. Very cool. Welcome, Rahul. So yeah, we're going to basically, as uh, Chris said, uh, Rob, that we're going to just go over kind of what was assigned to this group first. And once we agree from there, we can 
move on, I think that um, everything is pretty much broken down in our GitHub document. So um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so now we're, we're going to do everything I'm assuming on the Git or on the Google doc and then move it to GitHub later, right? And um, I think we can use the Google doc just to kind of doc capture what happened during the call. And then, um, you know, a, as we make changes or decisions, we can get that reflected into the Git repo. Perfect. So do you want to start with uh, the one dot one item and yes, see if that makes sense and maybe yeah, start talking it, through what we want to do with it. Let me move this underneath you. Ooh, my bad. There you go. And let me get the header. So one dot one is understanding the problem space. So. Any, does anyone have any initial remarks to open with? Maybe parts that they feel strongly about that we should know about. And, and I would ask, we, we tossed in um, a couple steps of groups of uh, constituents we wanted to talk to. Did we, do those feel appropriate? Did we miss anybody or? I don't, I don't think we have those recorded. Do we have those recorded, the five constituents that we wanted to talk to? Um, well, for example, we say we want to talk to five representative project maintainers. We don't have uh, people or projects yet, but just directionally, is that something we think is, would add value to the CERT effort? I think it would depend on what the projects were. I think if you were to talk to people like Homebrew or people that are in positions of doing something about it. I think that might, I don't know, that's just my opinion, maybe because I'm a package maintainer and like a packaging member in multiple things. But um, I think it would depend because if you talk to some like obscure or like even if it's not that obscure, like Express, like Express JS, which everyone seems to still use. Um, like, I don't know how relevant that would be. Yeah, and I, I think the intention of this was to try to talk to actual project maintainers to see what they would like to potentially see out of the cert. Would, would they find it valuable? What types of services would they benefit from? Or like, I think also negative uh, statements of what they would not like to see would be useful information to have. Right. Now, this is from an educational standpoint, not, not from like the SIG cert as a whole, right? Um, like when I say educational, I like get their opinions from like an educational point of view or, yeah, or we're essentially collecting requirements right? You know, from the, and this is a group of people we thought would be useful to, to get requirements from. Right. Would it be beneficial because we talked about five representative project maintainers to identify the kinds of projects that we're looking for because the requirements might be different depending on whether or not a project is part of a foundation, whether or not they have an existing security team or if they lever leverage a foundation security team such as Apache. Um, if it is a very small startup project or if it they just maintain, I don't know, 200 libraries on the internet for their specific language. I can imagine they're all slightly different and they want different things. Right, that's very well put. Um, I agree with you, Emily. I do think that there should be guidelines. I think that's kind of what I was trying to say before, but you put it way better than I did. <laughs> just tapping into your brain. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, as I said, like, um, I, I think that that would be great. Um, maybe some guidelines, um, cause I would think that the bigger, we would be wanting to talk to the bigger teams. Like I know gen two, for example, they have a security team and they have a packaging team that already has lots of opinions about this. So I know exactly who to talk to on that front. Now, whether or not they'll share their opinions with us, that's another story, but at least I know what they are. 
And, and at least for this particular, the first bullet point, I, I would try to stay away from the mega projects like Kubernetes or Apache or Kernel because we've all we already have as a second bullet point trying to talk to groups that have a security team. So like Red Hat and SUSE, I think Kubernetes and OpenStack would be good teams to talk to to get that feedback. So that would be the more mature projects. Fair, but, fair, good point. So how do we like homebrew? Because I'm already talking to them about something on OSWAP. Sure, I, I think that's fine. Then we could definitely put Mike McQuaid and homebrew down as one. And then if you guys like Gen2, they, there are two different people that do packaging and security, but um, that's another one that I could bring to the table. That's fairly large size. It might be better to maybe even talk to Arch. Um, I know there are some members from Arch in the community, but we work with Arch a lot, but I know that they're not necessarily opinionated. They're kind of just a packaging team. I'm thinking of people that like have communities that would be affected by like a zero day or like an actual, like where the cert might actually be handy, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, because, you know, folks like Suse or Solar Designer that have been embedded in this community are going to have some opinions on how they do stuff. Um, Correct. So it'd be nice to hear what, Again, more air quotes, generic. Do um, we have somebody from Susik? I They would be a great addition to this because I think- they Yeah, I, I, I can reach out to Marcus. He runs their CERC P-CERT. Yeah, because I know- The other guys at Canonical and other guys at Gals. and Gals and Red Hat butt heads often, and I know they're supposed to work off each other, so. Oh, but no, believe me, Suse and Red Hat work together all the time. Yeah. But that's a perspective. And that's not necessarily, you know, again, we're, we, I'd like to hear like how a small or medium project would benefit or what they'd like to see as right. output from this group. Right. You know, like the, the SUSEs of the world, we might be learning from what, what they're doing, tools and techniques, um, and then potentially trying to insert, um, getting a, a feed to or from those types of groups, those more mature teams, as opposed to potentially actually doing more work. Like right, a, a small to medium project. Right, because yeah, you know, the Kubernetes security team isn't going to come to us for help. No, <laughs> but Not we might likely. benefit from their output. <laughs> I had a couple of conversations with I think his name is Dan, who's like the man at Container, the Container Group. So maybe I could talk to him. I think he's Red Hat more than anything, though like Red Hat's like chief container guy. I can find him on GitHub. But I don't know if that's something that we want. Do we want the container group's opinion? I know they're not Kubernetes, but they're con the container group. I, I, I just think we need to pick on. some people and start surveying them. Okay. So, Crab, I think you said something interesting. Survey. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, Randall, are you thinking something along the lines of an individual performing an interview? Or are you thinking about uh, asking the foundation to provide us with an avenue to issue a survey for maintainers? So if, if we're keeping it with just five and we're, we're uniquely picking them to ask them, hey, what is it that you're looking for? Um, that open-ended kind of question interview process is probably best done as a one-on-one, -on -one. Um, whereas a larger scale survey for hitting out to multiple projects that meet different criteria, small projects, brand new projects, really big ones, some that are heritage and um, don't have their source code in GitHub or GitLab. What, what were you kind of thinking I, for soliciting? I, I do really like what you said. And I would actually say that um, that possibly I like the survey idea and I'm saying, I'm thinking that depending on who responds to the survey, maybe we can take it a step further and uh, like interview certain people, but I like, I like survey. I like the survey a lot. Cause some people might not respond. 
like it's very likely that the Gen 2 people might not respond just because they think that we're pointless. <laughs> and, and we have the Harvard survey results that we used for the multi-factor distribution last year. We can go uh, cherry pick a handful of teams there that, uh, to whether it's an interview or a survey. So that, that could potentially be kind of, uh, yeah. Right. I mean, I, mean, I would love to get a survey out to at least the nine parent distros that like, yeah. you know, I, I think homebrew is, al is almost, it's not really a distro, but might as well be. So then my next question would be, if we've talked about doing a survey and maybe a follow-up interview with select respondents, then we would need to have survey questions. Um, and those questions would likely be different, maybe, I don't know, um, based off of the kind of project, because Randall, you're talking specifically about distributions, um, but we have a lot of other open source projects that would potentially receive benefit here, individual maintainers that are maintaining a lot of libraries or some other such um, open source construct. So is it, do we want to do a single survey and try to get the bulk of everybody or do we need to do tailored surveys should we extend that to also include their security teams so the same concept because the next thing that we have under milestone is speak to five existing open source security teams um i like I, well first of all going back to the qualifiers i think i think as i said i think we should focus on people that actually have like have the biggest use of the cert because i don't think that we'll be able to fit everybody's point of view in one thing like in one objective so i think that people that like maintain a large number of packages and i think defining what a large number of packages is um would be a good idea um I do also agree that there could be smaller projects that need us, but then I think this is where maybe that criticality list of uh, critical projects, that was terribly said, but you get what I'm saying. That might be a, a place to like send the surveys out to. Um, I know that there's already a V1 of that list and I'm part of the team that's working on V2, um, but I think that that might be a good uh, step. But yeah, I, I agree that um we would need questions and that those questions would differ as well but i also think that we should kind of tailor who we send the surveys to and no not just distros <laughs> i can create or maybe i could like start a list of questions and maybe i could send them to you emily and you can elaborate or like I we can work together on that. Anyone we can else? we can do that. I would also recommend um, what existing surveys the foundation already has, and this might be a good question for Brian, um, because as I understand it, there was a recent open source maintainer survey that I believe was similar or might have covered this topic, but I, I'm not 100% sure. So if there's existing prior art from the foundation, we could potentially leverage that. Let me get the link for that um and I'll, I'll drop it here and we can we can see if there's stuff that's reusable from that oh, give me give me a few minutes on that thanks brian and then based off of whatever brian has is um additional material um we can potentially expand on top of that or do a more tailored and specific survey and get feedback from the larger group about additional questions because i know my perspective on some survey questions is going to be very different than others agreed it sounds like a good plan um yeah i like that I, I think that's a good direction give me some time sorry it's, it's all good take your time yeah we won't solve all the problems today but ideally we can start to flesh out what like a project plan specifically what we would like to get done and um, ideally try to uh, clear up anything that's unclear, ambiguous, or not, you know, a gap we have. For a second there, I thought you were going to say, 
I'll be happy if we solve 99% of the problems, you know? Uh. <laughs> we can do that. We just hit delete. That's how you solve yeah. that. <laughs> so if I answer the questions for the representative project maintainers or that level of survey, are um, is there an interest in doing the same for existing security teams like Kubernetes? So. Yes. And I think hopefully there's, there's some reuse between the surveys. Yeah. And I, I would say that when we're engaging existing security teams, we would, um, that might be an, an interview where we might be, ask them to share their processes or any key learnings they've had in engaging with their community. And, um, I, you know, would they, you know, what would they like to see out of a group like this around uh, assisting and coordinating, if anything? Right. But I think we've got a lot of really good existing security teams that we can uh, capture things to help make the cert uh, kind of, kind of jumpstart our start, our beginning. Agreed. And I, I would also venture that for security teams that work directly with an individual project, their level of integration and learnings is going to look very different than a security team like the Apache security team mm -hmm. who services the entire foundation. Yep. Agreed. Now, one thing I noticed on our GitHub that we didn't have, we were missing like objective, but um, correct me if I'm wrong that our objective in the, the, this cert is to avoid problems like log4j. I think you said this in one of our other meetings, Rob. Yeah, and that's an item for the full SIG. I was hoping somebody would... Uh... <laughs> have helped fill out our Git repo, but that'll be an item for the full SIG to work on kind of refining what our objective is and be uh, fairly precise. But yeah, it, 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 we would like to avoid situations like log4j and try to help increase communication to uh, downstream consumers. I, can, that's a I can add what I remember to that yeah. readme later, but... Um, I was just saying, I think that would be important for understanding and documenting the problem space, because that is kind of what we're saying then the problem space is, is it would be like a zero day like log4j, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's an interesting question. I, as I understand it, different members of the community that were involved in the log for shell remediation have different perspectives of what went wrong yes. as compared to end users. So what, how would one define what exactly the problems were with log4j and log4shell that an organization like the CERT and understanding the problem space could assist with? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Might it be beneficial just because that's like a fresh thing that's still really big? Would it be beneficial to maybe survey those people? Yeah, I can put us in touch with Mark who runs the Apache security team and he can we can uh, have a little one-on-one -on -one session with him. I know that I know Mark's kind of um, spiky <laughs> when it comes to asking what could have, you know, made a difference yep. in the log4j process. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, one other external source of uh, consultation on this might be the CISA report, uh, the CSRB, sorry, report afterward. And look for anything that suggests, you know, where there might have been mistakes made during the remediation process. Um, things like, as I understand it, a commit message was made early on that mentioned the undisclosed CVE. Yeah. Um, and not that, not that like having a response team would have prevented uh, that from happening, right? But um, 
that's the kind of easy mistake to make that is something hopefully a response team helps um, mitigate the chances of, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So I would just hope that whatever we characterize this was, we did, did not characterize this as, if they had only done this thing, log4j would have been a much easier thing or would not have happened or something, or the log4shell breach would not have happened. But um, we want to avoid that, but I think we could still ask, are there things that might have contributed to a, a smoother remediation process? Yeah, and, and I've, I, I was Mark's program manager for four years, so I, I, I have a personal relationship with him and we can get that perspective from the upstream community and the security team, but then also talk about um, some of the downstream suppliers, which is where I think the problem uh, predominantly laid. So I think Long, Long Rochelle is a good example of one, but that is by far not the only zero day that has caused a kerfuffle <laughs> in the community. Are there other ones where there has been some form of retrospective analysis on how it was handled that we could learn from? And that's an interesting new point, and what we don't have in the, the plan yet is I, I think that would be very good to try to find that research on previous retrospectives. I would, I would say, I know Google, Francis might be able to get us in touch with the zero day team at Google. They might have something to say about this. Yeah, that might be another good uh, team to target to, just in general talk to. Although I think GPZ is like separate from their cert. Yeah. Do you think, do you think David Wheeler would have a good list of resources from existing retrospectives associated with open source security incidents or may know of some? Possibly, yeah, we could ask him. I have this from Google from a while back. Let me send it. It's a spreadsheet where they track all their zero days, like historically. So Randall, I think you've gotten us through the first two bullets and maybe we've started on the fourth one. The third one is speak to solar designer OSS security list. Yeah. We did that he is an important figure within the, the back channels of how traditional Linux and open source gets fixed. So I think he's gonna have, again, kind of like Mark Cox, He's a little prickly at times, but I think he's got a lot of very valuable experience that he could share and he's very opinionated. <clears throat> we just need to take uh, that conversation with a grain of salt, but I think he's gonna potentially provide very good feedback and be able to just kind of describe how the, uh, the distros and the OSS sec lists uh, work. And that might be something that the CERT uh, could tap into or either as a feed or as a, an output that we need to make sure we notify that list. Cause that's a very large constituent of traditional open source development uh, notification. Does anyone know solar design? <laughs> I've talked with them a bunch of times. Um, and I actually had, I was talking with him via Twitter. Um, and I, said, I haven't circled back around to him. Uh, so that, that's a, that's he he will offer a very valuable perspective on how the back channel works, and we, we want to understand how we want to uh, integrate or uh, make benefit of uh, listening to. Right on. Could could we maybe arrange something, or maybe like get like a group email or something going with him so that yeah I, I i need to track down his email and re rekindle that conversation because he told me he didn't want to talk on twitter and he <laughs> he was very busy and he wouldn't oh, like, flip it over to email i just haven't had the time to track his email back down right on if i ever need to be you know the the wacko that's like hey how you doing i'm randall i'll do that <laughs> no, but he, he, he's aware of me and he's aware of this group's uh interest in talking to him but it's been about a month or so since i've Fair. kind of engaged in dialogue with him fair i know may I, please may, 
may I recommend potentially um, presenting it to them as a fireside chat that could potentially, depending on the level of prep involved and his willingness to participate, be leveraged as a webinar or other forum that could be beneficial for the foundation because I'm sure there's a lot of excellent historical knowledge um, and gleanings that could be um, reused across multiple different working groups. I would say yes, asterisks. Um, some of the information may be very sensitive and he may not be interested or able to share because it's again, it's, it's all based off of trust and relationships, but we certainly can ask that, propose it to him. And maybe he just you know, redacts, you know, does some self redaction and mm -hmm. avoid certain examples. Yep, and we can structure it accordingly, provide opportunity to pre-review any of the mm -hmm. content and do any kind of post uh, interview editing, any of those kinds of things. But mm -hmm. sounds like a, a good opportunity for a long lived resource. Yeah. Yeah, I very much agree. Um, sounds great. Brian, did, were, do you know, I know that you at, at one time were talking in parallel with him. Has any of your conversations continued at all with solar? <clears throat> no, um, no, I, I sent a few emails and did not hear back. Okay. So you have his email? Could you send that to me? Uh, you know, apparently it's an email that doesn't get much re responses if it's, uh, so I hope it's the correct one, but I will, I will dig up what I have. And send That'd it be to great. You and if first. not, I'll bug the red hat guys for it. So, um, yeah, go ahead. Um, if you're ready to move on, Randall, the next one was around existing literature that we had started on. Yes. Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, I, there's also a lot of OSWAP existing literature I've been yes. recently finding out. I will document said literature. And I'm also inventorying SKF for the education scene. So um, SKF is actually very interesting. Mm -hmm. I've, I've actually spent a lot of time <laughs> in SKF last week. So OpenSSF does some great stuff. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, I actually, David Wheeler's course is actually meticulously well put together. It's mm -hmm. very good. Yes. So, but anyway, but I, um, but I can inventory the OSLAP stuff if you, if you want to, let me. Well, so my question was, so a lot of the existing literature is around CBD guides, services, frameworks, those kinds of items, but we're really, at least in section 1.1, looking to understand and document the problem space. So the pertinent areas of any of the, that documentation is going to be probably within the executive summary or in the background sections. Right. Is that sufficient from a research perspective to support this activity? They also have links to like other guides because they have their own guides for coordinated vulnerability disclosure. So um, yeah, but you're right. It's in the executive summary. I, I have to dig those up and I will paste them in here. So, so maybe the actual, what you're suggesting, Emily, is the actual uh, process pieces we may want to open source would be better suited in section two? Yes. Or, okay, fair. Yeah, I mean, there's with all of the retrospectives and analysis that goes in both to generating the best practices, as well as in actually analyzing past problems in that space, there is usually a paragraph or two or some nuggets of what the actual problem is and why we are having another not necessarily navel gazing event, but another mm -hmm. analysis of what has transpired and led us back to the square that we're currently standing in. Mm -hmm. So I think from a particular AI, we can take uh, that bullet point and then kind of duplicate and focus it in on uh, what can we learn about process that we would need to uh, potentially recreate or borrow for the, as the cert is spun up. You know, not, not to add a bunch of work to this, but I think it'd be really great if we made like a table where we could like match up certain things to certain like yeah so that way like it's like comparing contrast type thing mm -hmm. it's open source anything's possible randall yeah it's true i'm gonna copy that line out 
and stage that for our next call. Right on. And I also don't think we have the CERT guide of coordinated vulnerability disclosure on our existing guides either. Uh, correct. Yeah. The, the multi party doc. Right. Now, from all of these guys, are we are we're going to follow? I'm assuming OSS or OS Open SSFs CVD file or guidance in the cert, right? Well, th that particular artifact talks to either a maintainer or a security researcher about, in general, what CVD is, and then some prescriptive steps. So, if we tell the maintainers, you should have a security MD file that describes your policy and your steps. Right. Um, that isn't necessarily for a cert right. to, okay. uh, to follow. It's not a prescriptive step for a cert to follow. Fair. But there, there will be some nuggets that talk about. So, you know, as we're engaging with some of these small teams, we can say, hey, you know, it would be great if you had this security policy or right. if you had some type of uh, report ingestion way. Fair. So what, what is our review? How are we going to conduct a said review? Let's just read, take notes and analyze. So at least if, again, with the perspective Emily gave us, so we're probably looking at these documents for the executive summaries and just to try to understand uh, concerns, things we should be aware of as we uh, begin to formulate our plan forward. And Eventually, then, if you look at enough of them, you'll start to discover some common patterns and mm -hmm. anti patterns associated with the problem space and some more thematic elements that we can leverage as not necessarily guiding posts, but more of more like walking sticks as we we determine how we want to engage with projects and assist them. Mm -hmm. There. Some of these executive summaries, though, are really intense. Yeah, and we might need to to you know have a homework where we everyone goes and reads it, and you know what did you take away from this, and have a little chat afterwards, like a book club. Fair. I love book clubs. I think my last one was like Harry Potter. <laughs> well, this will be a, a much longer upgrade. <laughs> Open source is like the wizarding world. It's true. true. <laughs> magic goes into a box and magic comes out. <laughs> uh, so the next bullet that we have, Randall, is speaking with the CERT CC and other coordinators. Was there specific uh, learnings that we wanted to gain around the problem space to, in order to document from them? Yes. CERT and uh, JP CERT and probably the it's the Netherlands or Finland CERT would be they deal with large multi-party coordinations for both closed and open source so I think they potentially could uh, give us some feedback on some things we want to uh, pay attention to or try to account for as we move forward. I think that one was a good one. I think art had connections and all that, right? Yeah, and art, art does, I do. Um, yeah, th th there's a handful of people that specialize in this around the globe. Um, and it's not particular to open source, but I think they can definitely, there'll be some lessons learned from their interactions. For both closed and open source, we can try to account for and plan right. for. So, creating meeting notes and analyze for trends. I think we did that. So, yes. Thank you. And I guess before we move on, is, is there anything else as we're trying to understand this area that we're missing? 
do these feel reasonable steps? Is there anything else we want to do? We want to correct this where it says instead of speak to five representatives, should we correct that to survey representative? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll need to have that corrected, but then within the repo, we also have the time and resource estimates associated with each of these uh -huh. um, and identified numerical value of SIG members and timing estimates associated with that. Um, that'll also need to be updated based off of this initial discussion. Yes. And that's what Mr. Bellendorf cares most about is what's the bill gonna look like we pass on to the uh, people potentially funding this. Given what we've discussed for 1.1, it does not, at least to my eyes, appear that there is a significant bill other than time. I, I think agree. understanding how much project management you want over the first phases of this thing, um, from, uh, how much you want to have <clears throat> provided by current open SS staff or would anticipate having kind of dedicated to this because imagine and maybe it's not in this first phase that we're looking at or the first the first thing that you would spend money on um, but uh, at some point you want kind of a management office a program office for this that is comprised of trustworthy and independent folks paid for that role in addition to whatever leverage you get from volunteers um, and I think that's that's going to be the most expensive part of any of this, and we should all just assume that that kind of thing I, both isn't free and isn't necessarily it's something you can take volunteers to do. Correct. The, most of the like FTE type things will be in stream three, where we're actually kind of mapping out what the how the cert might lay out from a staffing perspective and tooling. Um, but they're potentially, you know, maybe. An ex a, uh, example could be if we want to do surveys, potentially hiring an agency to do that, there might be some costs associated with that. But right now we don't have anything like that yet. Do we also want to track like the problems that we define and how we're addressing those over a period of time or is that not? Possible? Yes. Yep. I was just thinking that <laughs> we're talking a lot of front end here, but then we never really go like track it. Well, and I think most of this particular uh, group's work is going to get fed into uh, stream two and three, where you know, we actually start to document process and plan out tools and people. So there'll, there'll be a lot of, uh, as much as we can, parallel, but at some point we're going to produce some output and we're going to need to let other people conduct analysis on our deliverables. I think there's also a fair amount of us that are involved with the other ones as well. At least Just about know. all of us. Yeah. This is our focus time for stream one. <laughs> so we have about 15 minutes left and two more sections to go through that have significantly less content. Randall, yeah. how did you want to run through them? Uh, I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> uh, let's see. Discuss here. And what I, so why there is no content is because I tried to make the section one one an exemplar of what we would like to see each of the sections look like. I just ran out of gas. Very appreciative, Carl. Very appreciative. Yeah, that's very helpful. Um, I'm not sure, but considering that we have 15 minutes, I would say if anyone has any initial thoughts that they want to like, at least throw on here or throw on our meeting notes so therefore we have a place to start next time i think that would probably be so i would recommend at least for 1.2 which covers procedures around outreach to development communities about our services that i believe there is an outreach group within the foundation that would likely need to be leveraged to coordinate that activity and from a marketing perspective, mm -hmm. you almost need like a slick sheet of what the services are and the value that they provide. And then jumping down to 1.3, very related and very close held is assisting the maintainers through those offerings. You almost need like a security buddy to, to <laughs> show up to their meetings and be like, oh yeah, hi, I'm part of the, the CERT and this is what it is that we do. Let me, let me give you a presentation about all of our work that we're we've got ahead of us and how you can take advantage. 
So exactly. those are two different functions. Agreed. Agreed. Um, yes, I would say we, we should record that, or I think that's, yeah. Thank you, Carl, for taking notes. I appreciate it. Well, I, I kind of, when I get talking, I stop typing. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll reflect back on what Emily just said. But yeah, I absolutely agree that I think that that's something that we'll have to pause and we might be able to put some swag together saying we think it will take us 20 hours to develop a, a security buddy presentation. And then we want to earmark some time to go out and start approaching people, whether it's through webinars or you know, going to community meetings or outreaching through mailing lists. I'm about to figure all that out. Sounds like developer relations. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what that, that my intention of this particular group was, you know, how, how do we best engage with um, the communities? I think we should just all give you Leonard's new Microsoft email. <laughs> <laughs> So jumping back to 1.2, procedures around outreach to deaf communities about our services. Um, that one and the following one are going to be contingent upon the completion of the list of those services that will be available um, and likely going to have to wait until significantly later, um, after which there is the slick sheet associated with the services um, and then any other potential outreach activities to include conferences. So there's a, in my mind, focusing more around Brian's uh, statements earlier, there's probably going to be some creative expenses mm -hmm. with getting materials available and up to date with what those initial service offerings actually look like. So out of curiosity, we don't really have deliver deliverables of what actually needs to come out of this stream to go into the other streams. So would our deliverable basically be a list of problems or like maybe like a prioritized set of problems? I think that's entirely realistic. And once they're prioritized, we can evaluate the other recommendations for completion against that prioritized list to ensure that we are at least addressing the problems that this portion of the group has identified or provided an adjudication or some other form of justification as to why they've been set aside for the time being or chosen to be excluded. Right. So Randall, what do you think would be the most appropriate next steps for this group to go on? Um, do we wait to meet again to go through 1.2 a little bit more in depth and figuring out what those marketing and creative needs are, as well as 1.3? Or well, do you want some asynchronous activity? Well, I, I think that I think that the 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 problems is probably going to be the most important part. So I think that we probably I don't know if like 1.2 and 1.3 are necessarily like problem related because it kind of seems to me like they're they're not because i think that like for uh stream or the second group stream two or whatever i think that um they're going to be creating services right they'll be creating the inventory of kind of the, the processes uh for the the p-cert and kind of a a shopping list of things they need to, to provide those capabilities. But I think they're going to need to know a problem or what exactly yeah. they're trying yeah. to address in order they, to. We will, yes. Yeah. So, so that's why I think that that, um, I think that's the priority here because I think that's the, that's going to be a blocking item for the other teams. So as far as 
what to do next I, or i would say maybe meet next time because i don't know if we can really produce that right now um i think that we have to maybe like if, uh some of the stuff we talked about in 1.1 i think put some of that into action um and try to just start documenting as much of the problems as we can between now and the next meeting and hope and maybe by the next meeting we can walk out of that meeting with already identifying some problems and whatnot because the faster we can identify problems the faster the other groups can unblock themselves yes Is that fair Yeah, so I just want to recoup, recap what I heard you say is that someone is going to continue to consolidate list of existing prior knowledge and art around the problems. We definitely need to do the survey first. Um, and then everybody else is really relying on us to give them that problem space to be able to work through the services, right? I agree. Yep. I can, I, I will commit to documenting the problem space as much as I can, and I can be in touch with uh, you guys, we can do it on Slack and we can go from there. Right, so that won't cover the surveys, but at least it will give us the existing body of work that is already readily available on the internet. So as long as those are um, cataloged in a centralized location for folks to read through, we can assign individual um, research papers or retrospectives and then come up with a list of thematic problems. Correct. Also, as we talk with some of these people, I'm sure they'll also point us to what they think the biggest problems are and whatnot. And I'll, I'll take the AI to document, at least from like a distro's perspective, some contacts and give some suggestions for uh, existing security teams. Uh, and I guess we'll uh, figure out our survey for maintainers, if we can leverage what foundation already did or how we might go ahead with something. And, and may, maybe a, another part of the homework from this uh, group would be thinking of what those questions for the survey, what maybe, have you, we can at least come up with one good question per person. You know, we'd have six solid questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and we wanna keep them open-ended and what like what capabilities around coordinated voluntary disclosure do you you know, wish your team had that you know some of the external might be able to provide you kind of just high level questions like that and we can right. kind of, uh, talk through the final format of the questions and the number but it should be small we don't want to ask a billion questions writing prompt questions yeah exactly But I think that's the takeaway out of this group or like the homework, if that's acceptable to everyone. I think that works. Um, who is consolidating the list of existing material? Um, that way we can assign ourselves or is it just the link or the listing that's all the way down under 1.1 that Crab has diligently been filling in? Um, what do you guys think? I, I would probably, go towards a separate document so that way we can like i don't know i i like i like separation i think it's easier to, it makes things easier to maintain and for people to contribute to but i would suggest that it would also be a valuable resource within the repository as something to refer back to about where we discovered some of these problems in case anybody has questions about our source material so what I can do is I can, uh, I'll copy and paste this to a separate Google Doc and I'll share that in Slack later. And I'll start consolidating it, but if anyone has anything to add or wants to help consolidate it, great. I'm familiar with OS, or OSWAP and OS, uh, OpenSSF pretty well and CERT, but yeah. I know Google, I think Google, I think uh, GitHub also has a CVD guide. And they they might, but some of those platform things are specific to reporting yep. an issue to GitHub. Um, 
and the Google document is what actually was the foundation of the OpenSSF guide. Right. So yeah, but other than that, I think we're good. Okay, I've enumerated four actions underneath of uh, this Monday's meeting notes, and I've stubbed out the next Monday um, to, for folks to come prepared with some problems based on the existing problem space and assignments. Perfect. I really Thank appreciate you. your help, Emily. So yeah, are we good for today then? We are. All right. I think we have another meeting like right after this one. Yeah. So. I may see some of you very soon. Yeah. Cheers. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. everyone. Really appreciate it.